I finally got me some better tasting, better quality, dark roast coffee from the local discount resale store. Every now and then they get in some good quality name brand coffee for cheap. Sometimes for real cheap. I'm still waiting for them to get that. See if they can get that industrial mystery Honduras blend five pound bag of coffee they got last. They had that last year. It was only two, three bucks. And it tasted. It wasn't dark roast, but it had a good flavor. Anyway, so if you watched the last video, you'll you would have noticed that I was dusting off my old original issue kit that I monogrammed P forty seven that I built in nineteen seventy seven, and the dust was going into my coffee. I discovered that these lids off of some food containers is just the right size for a two cup coffee cup. So I got me a dust cover. <clears throat> now, what did we do today? Well, this is, can't make that any better. Can't salvage these diamonds any. I put so much clear coat and everything trying to get... Oh, well. There. That's in there. Motor. Face is in there. Going on there eventually. And... This stupid tripod keeps moving on me. And it's not even a Kenworth. Moving on. Anyway... And I was just test fitting this little guy. He sits. Oh, now, now he goes down. <laughs> He's still a little bit too high. S must be from Oregon, <laughs> and uh, or maybe even British Columbia, Canada. Did you see that video? Yeah, we know what that guy is doing now. How he's getting able to. How he's able to afford those crazy expensive Canadian prices for model kits. You, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you should go. You, is it rides by Chuck? <laughs> the way he did the video, I don't think he meant it, but <laughs> it came across as this is how I am able to afford the high price model kits. Uh, by taking advantage of the legalized drugs, legalized mind altering drugs in British Columbia. Anyway, and working on this cowling, got it painted red. I use spray paint as opposed to my original built 1977, where I brush, bristle brush painted this cowling, the red on this cowling. It actually looks pretty good. You know, I did a good job when I was a kid. <laughs> I did a lot better than now. <laughs> Isn't it weird how you would think over time you get better? <laughs> In my case, I get worse, I guess. <laughs> um, what else? Oh, yeah. And then I was looking. I don't know if you can notice. Because the lighting here is so bad. See, there's propeller decals on there. That came with the original kit from 1977. Now, I'm going to show you the terrible Chinese issue Ravel monogram one. Uh, propeller decals which are these ones right here they don't look very good um and then there's the eagle strike 
cartograph wands, which are, of course, the they're the best ones. You see, you have a white background, then you have these. Huh. And so I guess if you're not gonna buy expensive expensive aftermarket decals and uh that's another reason to uh get the original 1977 issue what was the other thing so i got this these done this color on this one done and that's as good as it's gonna get <laughs> Uh, the other one, I already wrecked it. I broke the antenna off. Plus, it took a little piece of the fuselage with it. That is one step forward. How many steps backwards? Uh, uh what? What else? I guess that's... Hmm. Is that it? I thought I had once again. I thought I had a lot to say, but <laughs> <clears throat> well, a lot of people are glad that I don't have a lot to say. <laughs> now I guess I'll <sighs> turn my attention to. To the other ones. 49 Mercury and the Gangbusters, maybe. <clears throat> so on the 49 Mercury. Yeah, I got a little carried away with the as I usually do with the coarse grit sandpaper and I'm gonna have to use some putty to smooth out the gouges I don't, can't sand them any more than what they are so and then what I did is I drilled out this headlight opening see it's just because I wanted to use the AMT headlight bucket the deep recessed headlight bucket
Well, that's it for the 49. For now. Well, I don't know why, but I'm spending more time on this than the projects that are overdue and the one that's coming up due and... Doing some painting, and of course the wind decided to kick up when I started spray painting. Built some boxes. Booze crates. I left this one open because I'm going to put the bottles in it. Booze bottles in it. I'm going to, you know. Posing with the booze by the golf bag, violin case, and then this, ugh, man. You don't, yep, like that other guy said, these are not for beginners. <laughs> so... The little steering gear in here. If you want the steering wheel to turn. Well. That, that was the theory. <laughs> if you want the steering wheel to turn. With the front wheels. When you turn the front wheels. There's a little steering gear. You gotta. Line up in there. And. <laughs> So, it was fin uh, fiddly getting that done. Because you got to... You got to uh, get this... The motor has to go in first. And then what I just... Can't just go by the instructions. You can't put this floorboard on... Until after you get the fenders and running board onto the chassis. And that's, uh, that's a, anyway, so you do that, and then, I got that all done, the gear, it's, it, it's, it looks like it's, the gears are meshed, but guess what, it don't work, you can steer the, you'll be able to steer, steer the front wheels, but it doesn't turn the steering wheel shaft. <laughs> it don't work. <laughs> At least the way they MPC claims. And then the uh, other thing that really is I ooh there's no distinct attachment points for the chassis to the fender running board thing. <laughs> So there's, they're glued up here and right at the very back here. And of course, after, you know, I did multiple drivings, you know, how, where is this going to a t touch and where should I put the glue? Then when I did that, put the glue on and then tried to, the damn chassis didn't want to go on. It was all crooked. Oh, and it looks still looks crooked <laughs> oh well uh nobody's going to inspect it i don't think what was the uh what else so that was that that's when I said, okay, that's enough of that. Especially when this thing doesn't even have a do, you know, there's no deadline on this one. I gotta focus on those other ones. 
I actually did more than I thought I would. Thought I was gonna. <sighs> Still gotta fix that wheel so it will roll. <sighs> Man. Yep. This brings back memories of why I didn't like MPC kits. Apparently I chose, <laughs> I always bought the MPC kits that had the crappy instructions and <laughs> things didn't go to what, together the way they said and all this other stuff. And then I was noticing these, this spare tire, this is a spare tire cover and it doesn't, Look at that, it doesn't even match what's on the box. They have a totally different spare tire set up on the box and, oh, you can't see. See, look at that. Totally different spare tire set up. <laughs> Dang it, I wish, I wish I wasn't missing the Greyhound hood ornament. I gotta find some kind of hood ornament. Well, I'm going to have to quit before I wreck it. <laughs> well, till next time.